I'm not sure if the man is a biologist or a zoologist or whatever, but he's training the gorilla to teach him sign language, mind you. <laughs> it's the first time <laughs> Delia has had anything in common with little John. She's fascinated. And little John has all kinds of information about primate behavior, so he calls it. <laughs> They're off to the zoo every time they get a chance. <laughs> it's wonderful. Oh, I don't know. There's something right about Delia at the zoo. Uh, oh, Jeff. before we delve into that any further, I'm off to Brooklyn. Well, uh, you said that Joe uh, sent a car for you. Oh, he is. I just thought I'd get my stuff together. Um, dear, why don't you, uh, wouldn't it be easier to stay over? I mean, as long as you say that Joe is working late with the tax man, you only have to turn right around and come back to Manhattan tomorrow morning Mother, anyway. please stop worrying. It's been three days now and nothing has happened. Sheepshead Bay, it's, there's very nice people out there. It's a quiet place, people like my husband. I'm safe there. Will you tell her? Can't. I'm worried myself. Honestly, the two of you... Well, even if it's only talk about a gang war, we've got plenty of reason to be frightened, dear. Oh, Kathleen! No. Oh. oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh, why didn't you say anything? We'd gotta pick you up. Oh, my word, you didn't say a oh, word. Oh, Siobhan. <laughs> I didn't even know myself, but after I called you and Art collected the kids from Ellen and Stewart and we had our reunion and passed out the souvenirs from Paris and everything, I realized I wasn't even going to unpack. The kids are so happy to have Art back, they won't miss me and it's fine with all of them and I, I just had to come home and... Jack. I... Oh, Jack. <laughs> And you, the one time in my life I go to Paris, you have to go and get married. <laughs> I want another wedding. I want the whole thing repeated. Where is he, anyway? <sighs> Just be happy, kid. That's I all. I am, I am. Wish we'd waited for you. I wish I'd never gone. Oh, the two of you are not making a bit of sense. Now, have you seen your father? Why don't you take your coat off? Are you exhausted? No, I want to talk all night. I have so many questions. When you feel like it, if you do, or Ma can tell me. About Mary? Yes. Sure. Maybe you start, and I'll fill in the gap. <laughs> I did see Da downstairs, and I got your letter with all the details. But if Mary called that day and said not to start the wedding without her, that she'd be along in half an hour, and then they found her car so far away, well... I don't understand. Well, dear, neither do we understand. No one can figure it out. And she didn't give any clue before she died. Well, she said a few things, but nothing that explained anything. And she's... she was such a terrific driver. Well, we figured that the car somehow went out of control. Uh, it was such a bad wreck that the police can't even tell. Well, I don't see how... I'm sorry, Cass. I... I can't fill in those gaps for you because I have the same ones myself. Come on, dear. Let's find your bed for tonight, hmm? Don't disappear. Oh, listen, the car's coming to pick me up in a few minutes, but I'll talk to you tomorrow, all right? I'll bring Joey by. You can meet him. Great. Yeah. Cass, I'm awfully glad that you came. <sighs> what? questions. They need answers. Well, Jack, the most important thing is that you were able to get to Mary in time. I care more about that than any questions. Yeah. Yeah, but seeing Cass confused like that, I remember I'm confused, too. Too many things don't fit, and I've got to get to work on it soon. It's my ride. Hi. I'm uh, parked right in front. I'll be right down. Uh, I better wait and walk you down. But, but you take your time. <clears throat> Tell everyone that I said goodnight, okay? Okay. Siobhan, be careful, huh? Every minute. I am.
You haven't touched your birthday cake. The cake's lovely. I just can't eat anymore. I guess my birthday's taking a back seat to the opening. When's the early edition? Well, Chester said they should be out any time now. But when they'll get to this neighborhood. Hey, well, we'll let the head waiter worry about it, okay? You don't mind waiting? Thank you. I couldn't face the critics with anybody but you. I like being here, you know that. I've been sort of wondering what's changed your mind. Well, I just decided that I couldn't miss your opening night. When I gave you the ticket, you practically threw it in the wastebasket. Had a few drinks, talked to a colleague, and uh, felt more human. You did. Listen, you're always human to me. Safe, warm. Always warm. It's an odd thing to say to me. I'm usually accused of the opposite. That's because most people don't know you like I know you. Even when you took me out of your bed and home to Mama and I was hurt and angry and you were so in control and awful, even then I didn't think you were cold. Wrong, yes, but not cold. <laughs> Kimberly Harris, up there behind the footlights. You were good. There were some rough spots, but I thought I did okay. You know, Buddy's friend said he thought I was about 25. Buddy's friend doesn't see too well. Come on now. Don't I look older on stage? Well, you know, it's really hard for me to tell. I mean, on stage, if, if you're not a child, you're an adult. And if, if you're an adult, then... Well, the number of years aren't nearly as important as... The number of years aren't nearly as important as being able to make contact. That's exactly how I feel. I also feel that the best part of doing this Estrada was having you in the audience tonight. I really don't want you to feel that way. Okay, I don't. It was a wonderful opportunity to do some serious acting on a professional level. We may close tomorrow and the reviews may be bad, but my career's underway. How's that? Well, I had something about uh, believing in your talent. Seneca believes in my talent. All right, I believe. It seems as if I have something. No, no, seems. No, seems. No, no. You have a gift, and you can make it grow, huh? Especially if you don't starve to death. Eat, or order something else. You let me close, and then you go away. It's not like turning cold. It's more like shutting the door. We're touching, and then you pat me on the head and drink your coffee. Kim, I didn't mean... Yes, you just did it. The whole thing just happened again. I'm sorry. Have you missed me, Seneca, these last couple of days? Did my age stop mattering? I missed you. Good. Because I missed you something fierce. I wanted my friend back. Not my father, my friend. Did you want me? Yes. But your age does matter, and it always will. Fine. I still love you. Now, will you at least put down that damn coffee cup? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go running after you. I was going to sit here and read my reviews and be happy or sad, depending. I didn't mean to run after you. Dr. Bolak, the latest edition. Oh, yes, thank you. These are for Miss Harris. Thank you. It's there. You read it. Tell me how Siobhan is. 
Really? That's hard to say, dear. I mean, she's calm and bright and cheerful around your father and me. I mean, but that would only be natural. She'd do that. She just told me that Joe said he wasn't worried and that we're supposed to relax. What would you say, Jack? I think she's scared. Yes, I think so. How do you feel about Joe? I like him. He loves Siobhan, I'm sure of that, but not much else. <laughs> Lately, I try to think of what I really am sure of these days. Thank heaven for you and Art and children. Everything is all right at home, isn't it? Yes, Ma. Oh. We're well and happy and thoroughly boring, except for Paris. And now that's over. We'll be back in our little rut no time flat, which will suit me fine. <laughs> My salad, Kathleen. Oh. My rock of Gibraltar. Yeah. You were always with great help even when you were two years old. <laughs> oh, I've missed you, darling. I really have. I've missed you, too. I'm going to look in on Ryan. I'll be back. Oh. How should I talk to him? Have I been saying stupid things? No, no. He just left us to have a couple of words to ourselves, that's all. Well, it was a nice thing to do. Yes, he's... He's doing pretty well lately. And how about you? You know, I uh, tried to get back from Paris as fast as I could. I'm sorry I wasn't here sooner. Oh, what could you have done, Kathleen? The telegram followed us around for a while, and uh, when it was delivered, I, I read it, and I could feel how it was for you, and I, I needed to tell you that I knew the pain that you must have been going through. <laughs> You know, I know that Siobhan has so many of her own worries. I don't like to burden her with mine, but... Oh, my Kathleen. Ah, hi. Is Joey finished with the accountant? Oh, yes, long ago. Well, where is he? You said that if he wasn't... Well, he... Relax. He's at the apartment, safe and sound. You can call him if you like. I'm oh, sorry, I guess I got my signals crossed, but I could take you right over there. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, there's no rush. How are you doing? Fine. How was your visit to Riverside? Oh, it was wonderful. My sister's arrived home, the one, the one who lives in Pittsburgh. Oh, how nice. You haven't seen her since Mary's accident. Sit. Have some wine. Thank you. Must have been very difficult. Well, it was sad, especially for Jack. Of course. Well, the questions surrounding Mary's death uh, were popping up again. Besides which, Jack's a reporter, and he's used to getting all the answers, you know. It was very painful. He's still bothered about the phone call from Mary. Well, she also said some things which didn't make sense before she died. Uh, plus, Jack, she was very upset with Jack that morning, and she was upset with me, too. Anyway, there were just some problems that couldn't be resolved, so... It all came flooding back when Cass started asking for explanations why the car had to crash and why was it so far away from out in that godforsaken place when supposedly she was on her way to Riverside. Oh, boy. Guess I'm more tired than I realized I ought to go home. Mary talked to Jack before she died? Yeah. What did she say? Well, Tizo, I'm not sure. Good night. I don't want to keep Joey. No, you run along. Get Larry over here. Want him now? Now, fast. Ah, Liz is Strata. Here it is. Looks short. Yeah, one brief paragraph. You going someplace? No. I mean, yes. If all he says about me is one breast was bare, I'm going under the table. Okay, just hold on now. Tonight, this reviewer saw his first full-scale production of the ancient Greek comedy, Lysistrata. Some ancient ruins do not deserve resurrection. Nice. Go on. Uh, the play itself is full of jokes and truisms so lame it's hard to believe they're from the pen of Aristophanes. But one knows his other brilliant works and forgives him. Not so the youngsters who had the temerity to launch this wretched... Hey, look, you really don't need this. This guy is so biased, he's not worth reading. 
This wretched what? Now, let's look at the other paper. Please finish that one. The youngsters who launched this wretched... A showcase. I will grant the producer, director, and scantily clad cast the favor of anonymity herein. Pompous ass. Anonymity? No names? No one. No, I, I read every word. Well, to hell with him. You bet. You want to get out of here? No, I want you to read the other review. Oh, hey, Kim. I mean it. I mean, if that one's bad, too, then I'll know it wasn't just one creep dismissing weeks of work and... Well, I don't see it anywhere. Well, it has to be there. I mean... The guy who reviews off-off-Broadway for them was in the audience. Chester yeah. pointed him out to me. Maybe he missed his deadline. Maybe he didn't think it was worth reviewing. You know, look, honey, the fact of the matter is you were the best thing in that production. Did you hate it, too? I loved what you did. But the play, the direction, the nudity, for all the right reasons, what did you really think? Well, I mean, none of that really spoke to me. So then basically you agreed with my mother. No. Kim, you have a talent that stands out. That stands out so much that he did me the favor of not mentioning my name. It hurts, I know. Look, all I can say is uh, this hasn't changed my opinion, and it shouldn't change yours. I can't help it. I feel like a fool, like... like the audience must have been laughing at me. Like people here are laughing. <laughs> like the waiter read the review before he gave it to us, and now he's watching me cry. And... I want to hide. I just want to hide. Okay. Let's go. Not to my mother's. I can't face her yet. Come to my place. Just this once, for a little while. my girl. And so does her da. Let me go downstairs and see what's keeping that man. Good to see you again. You too. I've thought so much about you. I've thought about you too. <laughs> Getting a news and a telegram overseas. Well, I guess the way I handled it is I, I didn't believe it. It was terrible, but not real somehow. I feel that way sometimes myself. I was there. I, I said goodbye. Thank God she wasn't alone. Yeah. And Mac gave her extreme unction. Mac, me, and your parents. She, she held on for us. Maybe you don't want to go into this now. You don't have to. Does it help? Well, I need to picture it. Morbid as that sounds. But it doesn't have to be all at once or all from you. Just whatever comes easily. How's Ryan doing? I'd like to hear about her, too. It, it, it's okay. I, uh... I can talk about Mary. The way she died, trapped in that car, looking at me and trying to tell me... I've been seeing it over and over since you got here, like, like a piece of a movie. She wasn't conscious at first. The, the medic had Maeve talk to her, and Maeve asked her to wake up. And then she told her and insisted. Mary opened up her eyes. She, no pain. She, she didn't feel anything. And, 
and she said to me that she loved me. I understood that very clearly. Yes. And she said, man in the green hat. And she meant something. It, it wasn't just words. But I don't know what so far. Yes, sir. I was just getting into the car when George caught me. What is it? Some kind of problem? Yes, Larry, there is some kind of problem. Okay. Only I don't explain it to you. You explain to me. The way Mrs. Finelli died. The car crash. Mm, what about it? You did a very thorough job. Sure. Then explain to me, Larry, how come she woke up and talked before she died? A new original reality series on SoapNet. Mom and Dad are moving in for a financial intervention. It's a matter of life or debt. Bank of Mom and Dad. All new Wednesday at 10, only on SoapNet.